A trip for a couple takes a tragic turn when their SUV crashes on Interstate 75 in Scott County. An update on the investigation. The debate over a proposed garbage transfer station near a Lexington neighborhood went to the city's Board of Adjustment today, and both sides had plenty to say. I think there is so much at stake in this election. Chelsea Clinton campaigned for her mother Hillary in Lexington today, and Hillary Clinton herself is planning a visit to Kentucky soon. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening. We begin tonight with a sad update about a former UK basketball player. In the last hour, we have learned Ed Davender died days after suffering a massive heart attack. Our Rob Bromley joins us now with the breaking details. Rob? By all accounts, former Wildcat Ed Davender has been on life support for the last three days after suffering a serious heart attack. Family and friends were called to his bedside. The Herald Leader first reporting that he has now passed. Davender came to UK back in 1984. He played one season under Joe Hall, three seasons for Eddie Sutton. He stands 11th on UK's all time scoring list, just behind the great Alex Groza. Davender was a lightning quick point guard and a top notch defensive player who played alongside Rex Chapman his last two seasons. Davender was 49. He would have turned 50 later this month. All right, Rob, certainly sad to see someone from the UK family go. Well, what led to a deadly crash on Interstate 75 in Scott County? Tonight, we're learning more about that investigation. Police say an SUV pulling a trailer flipped in the median of the southbound lanes of I 75 near the Sadieville exit this afternoon. They say the driver died in the crash, and we have now learned his name. Garrett Weimer is live with the latest in our top story at 6. Garrett? Investigators say a couple's trip down I-75 here today took a deadly turn after the driver lost control. Scott County Coroner John Goble says 67-year-old Mark Robert Young died in the crash near Sadieville. We're told his passenger, his wife, should be okay. First responders hoped he'd pull through. They did get him removed rapidly. Um, unfortunately, when they're doing their initial assessment, they couldn't find a pulse. They tried to get him out rapidly to see if there was any help. But unfortunately, there wasn't. Investigators say the driver of the SUV died after he lost control and ended up in the median upside down. Officials say the man's wife told them their trailer started to wobble shortly before the crash. We're told the woman wasn't seriously hurt. First responders closed one lane northbound for a bit, but then opened it back up as soon as they could when they saw how drivers reacted. Uh, with the one lane blocking, of course, everybody was slowing down to get out their phones and take videos and pictures, which was becoming extremely hazardous. So since we didn't have any tools that we needed at the time after that, we moved the vehicles over and got traffic opened up so everybody could get going. Investigators had to block the southbound lanes off and on as they investigated, but with the crash in the median, it didn't slow down traffic very much. Live off I-75 in Scott County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. And the coroner says the victim, Mark Young, is from Cincinnati. The sunshine gave us a nice break from the showers and storms today, but it looks like the weekend will be stormy at times. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at your forecast. At least we've had our Friday that was nice out there. We go into the weekend, as you mentioned, Amber, those showers and storms begin to return. Heading out for an evening on the town on this Friday. Let's get you covered and get you set before you get out the door. Upper 60s in the north to upper 70s in the south. This is a part of the state that picked up more in the way of sunshine this afternoon compared to folks to the north of us. Here's a live look into Lexington. It is cloudy. It is overcast. Looks threatening. 68 degrees at current temperature with humidity at 52%. Though with the overcast and that threatening sky, Defender Radar Network not picking up on much. A little light rain around Bowling Green, but that is weakening as it moves into drier air that is in place across our part of the world. Back to the west, though. Potent storm system is wrapping up. It's heading toward the Ohio Valley Saturday into Sunday with thunderstorms increasing. A few of those could be strong and an unsettled pattern will uh, carry us into the first week of May. We call it Kentucky Derby Week around here, obviously. We'll take a look at that new hour by hour for the weekend and focus on that pattern for next week in a few minutes.
Chris, thank you. They say it is too close to home. Hundreds of people living in a Lexington neighborhood are fighting a proposed garbage transfer station. This afternoon, that company that wants to build it made a pitch during a hearing at Lexington's Board of Adjustment. The station would be built on Leestown Road near Meadowthorpe neighborhood. People on both sides of the issue had plenty to say at this afternoon's hearing. Caitlin Sentner joins us live with the latest. Caitlin. It's been a long afternoon and still no decision, but we do look to be close to one. Now, a local neighborhood association showing strong opposition today against a trash company's potential move off of Lyle Industrial Avenue. All of them wearing green stickers that say MNA says no. Two very different viewpoints on Republic Services move. It's a heavy industrial zoned area on Lyle Industrial Avenue that Republic Services wants to move its transfer station operations to. That means a site garbage trucks would enter and then waste would leave in semi trucks. Republic says this is a way to consolidate garbage and in turn save money. The trash company says they need this because its current transfer station has a legitimate capacity issue and high cost for repair and replacement. Republic is asking the Board of Adjustment for a conditional use permit to locate on Lyle Industrial. But a local neighborhood association says they don't want it near them. More than 50 in opposition to the move showed today. Around 600 had signed a petition against the move, and a couple hundred sent in letters. They're concerned about traffic and smell and don't believe the company's reasons for moving are warranted. I, I just have no reason to believe. I've not heard the city tell me we don't have capacity. As the property owner next door, we have. Uh, you know, if, if, if there's something that comes up and they're not doing what they say they're going to do, then I would absolutely have a take issue with it and be with the first to, uh, to make a complaint. But uh, everything that I've reviewed that they've proposed is uh, there could be a whole lot worse um, neighbors out there. Quite a few people from the nearby neighborhoods got up and spoke today, and some of them were children. Now, this meeting started at 1.30 today, so many have been here a total of four and a half hours. Still no decision yet, but we'll bring information as soon as it's available. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. The staff had suggested approval of a conditional use permit, citing Republic's detailed operational plan, but a board member asked how Republic had shown good practices in recent years. New tonight, one of five people charged in the murder of a man in Rowan County now admits to playing a role in that crime. According to the Moorhead News, 21-year-old Jack Abrams pled guilty to murder, robbery, and evidence tampering this morning. He's now facing 30 years in prison when he's sentenced May 20th. Police say the victim, 20-year-old Bo Otis, was killed during a home invasion in June of 2014. The four other people charged in the case are scheduled to be back in court next month. New tonight, two inmates are back in custody after police say they walked away from work release. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says 41-year-old Charles Migrant and 40-year-old Reggie Jones were supposed to be working at Kentucky Correctional Industries at Frankfurt, but deputies say they found them both nearby. Both inmates have been charged with criminal trespass and escape, and they both had been serving time at Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington. New tonight, the trial of an eastern Kentucky attorney and two other people charged in a massive disability benefit scheme has been delayed. Eric C. Kahn, along with Judge David Doherty and Dr. Alfred Atkins, were scheduled to go on trial in federal court in June. But attorneys for all three men filed a motion earlier this week asking for the delay. A federal judge agreed to the delay, saying the case is too complex to go to trial by June. A new trial date has not been set, but the judge did set a status hearing for all three men for July 11th. And they're accused of working together to get $600 million out of the government. Kentucky Republicans have already held their caucus in the presidential race, but the state's Democrats will have their turn next month with the primary. And one of the candidates is now focusing on the bluegrass state. Hillary Clinton sent her daughter, Chelsea, to Lexington today to campaign for. Mike Linden has the latest now from the campaign trail. With nearly two weeks to go until the Kentucky presidential primary, presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is staking out her share of the bluegrass by opening up a campaign headquarters here in Lexington. It was a standing room only crowd at the Hillary Clinton headquarters at the Eastland Shopping Mall in Lexington today. Supporters say they're ready for a historic change. I'm 81 years old and it's time for a woman. If you want someone in Portland that will fight to make
make sure we continue to move voting rights forward. Let me hear you say, Hill, yes? Hill, yes! Both Allison Lundegren Grimes and the first female Kentucky governor, Martha Lane Collins, kicked off the proceedings. That's when Hillary Clinton's daughter, Chelsea, spoke on her mother's behalf. I think there is so much at stake in this election. And I think we need someone who is a problem solver. We need someone who knows how to make progress. With a presidential primary vote right around the corner, Clinton supporters say Hillary is the most qualified for the job, regardless of gender. She's the most qualified human being who happens to be a woman. And so our new mantra is if she's being accused of playing the woman card, then deal me in. In Lexington, Mike Linden. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to see a female president in Washington, D.C. WKYT. The Kentucky primary is May 17th. It will include multiple races for both Democrats and Republicans. Hillary Clinton is planning to campaign in Kentucky next week. She is planning a stop in Ashland on Monday. New tonight, we have learned Richmond Police Chief Larry Brock is uh, retiring from the department to take a new position. Governor Bevin has appointed him to the Kentucky Parole Board. On May 23rd, Brock will take over for Sarah Johnson, who resigned. He'll serve the rest of Johnson's term, which ends in June of 2019. A California girl traveled all the way to central Kentucky to make her wish come true. How it involved a famous horse, next. And then why a downtown Lexington Bridge will look much brighter tonight. New tonight, a nine-year-old girl traveled across the country to Kentucky to have a special wish granted. Tiana lives in Huntington Beach, California, and she's battling a form of leukemia. Zenyatta became her favorite horse after seeing the thoroughbred champion race on TV. Make-A-Wish Foundation found out and brought Tiana and her family to central Kentucky so they could meet Zenyatta. She got to feed her today at Lane's End Farm in Woodford County. Tiana told us why she likes Zenyatta so much. Because she's sweet and she won basically all her races. <laughs> After meeting her favorite horse, Tiana and her family got to spend some time at Keeneland to watch some other horses race today. A bridge in downtown Lexington will look much brighter tonight. New sculptures on the Oliver Lewis Bridge on Oliver Lewis Way near Manchester Street will be lit during a ceremony at 8 tonight. It all ends with a fireworks show. The lighting ceremony is free and open to the public. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Weekend is off and running with clouds that are thickening up across the area. Those clouds will eventually throw some rain our way yet again. Hope you got the mowing in today. We look outside. And we are seeing the clouds now thickening up at every stop. Southeastern Kentucky, still a little sunshine, boosting temperatures into the southeastern corner, close to 80 degrees. Upper 60s, though, showing up into the bluegrass region and points to the north where we have a little more cloud cover. We are farther away from that warm front that is to our southwest. Defender radar network, nothing is out there. Rain shield into western Kentucky is decreasing the farther east that it goes. It's encountering this drier air and it looked impressive. And now, two hours later, look at that. It continues to kind of uh, just go by the wayside as it moves into parts of central Kentucky. Warm front is two hours south. That is what is unleashing the warm and juicy air mass. We've got a major severe weather outbreak that is ongoing across parts of the Plain States right now from Kansas through Oklahoma down into Texas, likely into sections of Arkansas and eventually Louisiana as well. Same system there is going to throw some storms our way for the weekend. Not really seeing a big push for severe weather this weekend. Can we get some local small hail reports or maybe some gusty winds. Yes, I think the high water threat may end up being the greatest one that we face this weekend, similar to what we went through a few days ago. Computer models are trying to really drive home a corridor of two to four inches of rain this weekend into parts of central Kentucky. Now, some of these same areas were hard hit a few days ago. If we can get those totals realized, then we may be talking about some, again, local flooding issues. We picked up a lot of rain this week into sections of especially central Kentucky. Hour by hour forecast weakens that little band of rain into central Kentucky. Then as we go through the day tomorrow, floodgates are open. There is your warm front, kids. 57 in northern Kentucky, 75 southern parts of the area as you make a run toward the low 80s across the Tennessee border counties. This model 
says that tomorrow afternoon we spike into the middle 80s for a small little area into southern Kentucky. I'll tell you flat out, if we hit 80 or get close to it tomorrow with some sunshine, watch out tomorrow late afternoon into the evening. Could be some strong or severe thunderstorms working in from southwest to northeast. And you can see how they're trying to highlight uh, the bluegrass region for the greatest concentration of those. Fast forwarding into Sunday. Still with a cold front on top of us, some showers and storms. It's not going to rain the entire weekend, though. You're going to have some dry hours. Don't cancel a lot of outdoor plans just yet. Make sure you have a plan B. That late Monday forecast gets a little shy on us. Looking ahead toward the middle and end of next week, it is a cooler derby week. Jet, jet stream, he says, will take a big dip into the south. That's going to open the uh, floodgates for some cool, if not chilly air, potentially working in two parts of the Ohio Valley. Coming at us in a few waves. First round of some cool on Monday. Could be a strong thunderstorm ahead of a cold front on Wednesday that knocks the temperatures even cooler as we go toward the second half of next week. But over the next few days, it's all about the rounds of storms taking shape and targeting the bluegrass state. You have us prepared. Mm -hmm. We'll watch them for you. Thanks, it. Chris. You bet. John Calipari continuing to get back at it. That's what he's calling it on the treadmill yesterday and lifting weights today. And one week from tomorrow, Todd Fletcher will have a pair entered in the Derby. He talks about Outward next in sports. The Herald Leader reporting within the last hour that former Wildcat Ed Davender has died. Davender had been on life support the last three days after suffering what we're told was a massive heart attack. Joby Hall, the man who recruited him to UK, remembered him as a hard nosed player. He was uh, a tough, hard nosed kid. He was 6'2, and uh, he could go up against anybody. He was a great defensive player because he was extremely competitive, which is what you like seeing a young man. John Calipari was on the treadmill yesterday. Today he was lifting weights. In another video that appeared on his website, Cal continued his routine to get himself in shape. I'm going to go bench 270 pounds three times. Oh yeah, 270, and I'll say it again, do not try it at home. Middle-aged men, please don't do it. Look at me and be jealous. I get that a lot, just don't worry about it. Two, seven. two three. There go. Good, one. Good, two. Ooh, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. Push, oh, push. Oh, hey. Did you really think I was going to bench 270 pounds. Really? Come on. A little more lifting to do right now. So now I have a little free time, as you can see, goofing off, lifting, getting in shape. And I'm not goofing off. I got to have a month and a half, two months, see where I am at that point as I go forward training. Because this next season is going to be war. But I also am going to use the next few weeks to kind of talk about where this started seven years ago where we are now and where it's going and my dream, my vision of what I want. And that video at CoachCal.com and you can see the entire workout on our website, WKYT.com. Nyquist, the two-year-old champ and Florida Derby winner, got in a final work today at Keeneland. Nyquist was on the main Keeneland track just a little afternoon today, so fans got a chance to see the Kentucky Derby favorite as he worked a mile in 141. Trainer Doug O'Neill said he'll ship his prize pupil to Churchill Downs tomorrow and then shut it down until the Derby. I was just looking for a good gallop in and a good gallop out and um, wanted to hear Mario be happy and, and we got all that so you know to go his standard mile back home is like 145, 146 and he went 141 today and and uh, you know he's a horse too sometimes when he's by himself he used to kind of just wait and not overdo it and you know today said, Mario said as he pulled away from Rawlis he was doing it all on his own and kind of a new dimension if you will that uh, he's you know comfortable pulling away from other horses, so that was cool. And in Louisville, no less than 10 Derby hopefuls on the Churchill Downs track, all trying to get in work and beat tomorrow's expected rain. Todd Pletcher trains a pair, Dustin, the Tampa Bay Derby winner, and Outwork, winner of the Wood Memorial. 
Guy had him going just a little bit faster than Dustin. And uh, same thing, what I really liked about it was the way he finished. I had him the last quarter in 22 and four with a powerful gallop out. Uh, I had him out 126 and four and pulling up the mile in 141. Um, he can sometimes, as he did in the Wood Memorial, when he gets past the last horse, he kind of tends to idle a little bit. Today, I thought he was much more professional, focused, stayed concentrated uh, you know, throughout the gallop out. And closing day at Keeneland, Olorda, ridden by Julian LaPeru, wins the Bewitch Stakes. Sam Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. A final check of your first alert forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, we've all heard of compassionate release for inmates, but what about compassionate entry? Steve Hartman has that story. All right, we're in for a, kind of a rocky weekend, right? Yeah, we are. It's not going to rain uh, all day tomorrow. Not going to rain all day Sunday. But yes, showers and storms will be coming at us in waves over the next few days. Temperatures mainly in the 70s. And coming up tonight, we'll track the uh, rain through the day tomorrow with a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast. Sort of coming and going kind of showers. Yeah, pretty much. But know. tomorrow evening, keep an eye. It could be some strong storms around. All right. All right. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. We will see you back here at 11. The CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley's next.